Hey there, and welcome to my new Berserker Guide for Tainted Grail Conquest. I'm Icon, and in this video I'm going to introduce the Berserker class to you. I'm going to talk about the general gameplay loop, what the strengths and weaknesses of this character class are, what kind of cards you might want to prefer, and what kind of perks seem to be interesting for this character class, and last but not least, we're going to talk about a few runes as well. So, as usual, we're going to check out the character class first. The Berserker's Ultimate is pretty nifty. It gives you lifesteal until the end of the turn. The effect strength is uh, growing stronger with the amount of charges. As we see here, at maximum charges, we heal ourselves for exactly the same amount of damage we deal. We charge this ability by suffering hits. So, this already showcases exactly what the Berserker is all about. Taking hits in a smart way and utilizing the ultimate to heal herself back up. This is empowered by the passive here. Whenever we fall below 50% HP, we gain one point of energy. So, this is kind of a double edged sword, but at the end of the day, it always gives you more powerful turns the closer you go to death, which is something I really do like. So, beyond that, we're going to check out the cards now, which we start with. The Berserker has stances and attacks. The unique card for one of the unique cards for the Berserker is the Crawling Fire, a rather weak attack which reduces the enemy's armor by 25 for a certain amount of time, which is really, really hefty. And also keep in mind this skill grows stronger the more dead you are. So, another mechanic which invites you to play with lower HP. The unique stance for the Berserker is, is 45, which is really, really cool. You gain some armor and you retaliate for every hit you which, which strikes you until the end of the turn. So basically, you dish out damage for getting attacked. So the block cards right next to that look a little bit uh, off, because all these traits of the Berserker, especially the ultimate, only charge up if you actually suffer damage. So if you block attacks, it doesn't work. So with that being said and done, let's get outside and show you these things in motion. Overall, I consider the Berserker as the most fun class to play among the among the fighters, for me personally, for my personal taste. That's mostly because I find I, I thought it was the easiest to acquire character class for me. So your usual uh, approach to fights is fortify when they want to attack you. Multiple attackers are the best that can happen to you because, you know, 5 damage reflection per hit. Wonderful. So we got this under control now, and now let's just dish out some damage and wait until the end of the turn. There we go. 10 damage by just getting attacked. We can't do this one more time if we really want to. We could also stun the guy, but honestly, it's not worth it. So what's the Tainted Force? Ah, big hit by Tainted Force. We're just going to sweep away that guy. So the maximum HP of the Berserker class is insanely high. They start out with 100 HP, which is really a lot. And you, you actually need that to, come in, to, to facilitate that playstyle. When it's going down to cards, I personally prefer two types of cards. For one, armor increasers and enemy damage decreasers. I, I put them both into the same niche because, you know, what increases my armor decreases the enemy's damage and what decreases the enemy's damage is basically working like armor for me too. It's the same effect, only on two uh, different sides of the scale. This is one thing, and the other thing I really love to keep an eye out for the Berserker class are the attack are attacks which bring out a lot of damage and stuff like the double strike here that's especially especially tasty or well rapid attack also quite okay i mean six times 33 damage translates into 200 percent as well so basically this one deals 200 percent damage this one deals 200 percent damage although there's a little bit more because of the cleave. What I want to say about, uh, what I want to emphasize here is cards which deal extra damage are so vital to use your ultimate accordingly. Because if you, if you get that thing out while having max charges, 
you're probably full HP after that again if you facilitate this attack well. And that's why you actually really need them. So perk-wise, there's max HP perks, which are totally worth it. I mean, basically the Berserker grows better the more HP he has because that's more... <laughs> more money to work with basically your your hp are your are your uh, are your funds in this uh, character class and you have to manage them it's a very unique play style and i love it a lot also very good is stuff which increases your armor perk wise and well ah stuff like that damage reduction there's also a perk around there which influences your ultimate charges I know of one which lets you start with uh, ultimate charges at the beginning of a fight. I really, really, really value that a lot. Because at the end of the day, the ultimate charges are quite hard to come by. And the faster you are at 100% uh, or at full charges, 100% lifesteal, the easier you can sustain yourself. And the longer you play the Berserker, the more you will notice that the... HP are a very, very fickle thing, and there's uh, no need to be worried, even if you're low. So, this is one of those fights where these guys, they will explode, and this guy, well, as you see here, he's attacking me three times. We're just going to fortify ourselves and uh, leave that guy to the task of destroying himself alone. So, what I personally felt like the biggest different difficulty for me with the Berserker was for one to wrap my head around the fact that I have to accept to to get attacked and uh, I have to accept to to suffer damage as part of my as part of my, my my character class concept which was a little bit difficult for me to accept because usually I'm a player who loves to avoid damage at all costs this is a uh, totally different uh, experience so for example ah good opportunity we have a double strike Nobody wants to attack me, activate the Berserker skill, and check out all HP again. That's how this character class works, and that's really, really, really satisfying. I really do like this, but this is uh, also, there's also the the downside of this uh, playstyle at the same time in it. It's really easy to accidentally blow yourself up because you're just tanking too much damage because you were just a little bit too feisty with that uh, last move. And it's easy to blow yourself up, especially when you're up against uh, growing and uh, scaling enemies, which brings me again to the point to emphasize everything, every scaling enemy is something you should uh, try to smack out as quick as possible because if they can grow, if their uh, damage grows over time, it's really bad for you in general because the Berserker has no innate scaling attributes. Like, he's not even having something like the... Like the Weird Hunter who's able to um, at least trigger some sort of uh, weakness on the enemy to, am to amplify his damage or the the sentinel who's actually growing stronger for every turn he didn't take damage so overall the berserker can't scale up that well but he's really good at surviving so here we go stuff like that which gives you ultimate uh, charges is basically something to heal with also worth picking up our cards that bring in some opportunities to stun because at the end of the day, it's just like with every other character and character class in this game, it's really, really good to have an opportunity to stop enemies from what they're doing. I mean, it's all fine and dandy if your strategy is to, to just tank blows and uh, grow out of that, fine. But if you have an enemy which deals, I don't know, 200 damage every sixth blow or something like that, you might want to avoid that. I mean, there's also block, which helps you with that, but block is kind of hard to determine. The enemy attacks always get resolved by from left to right, so first the abomination, then this guy, then this guy, and sometimes, you know, block was would not be able to block anything from this guy. Stun is very more is much more on point 
With stun, you can actively take out this damage dealer. Block can sometimes uh, let you down, and yeah, very, very uh, important to, to mention that at this point, because you can really die easily if you rely on blocks alone too much. That's why I really love to have one or two extra stuns in my deck, because, you know, it never hurts to have more options to stun the enemy. If you have an, if you can have options which uh, deal damage at the same time, even better. Because your basic stun card, your deck from the... Your, your, your fighter deck always includes, is pretty costly and has only a very limited effect by just stunning the enemy and not adding anything on top of that. Anywho, so I think that's uh, pretty clear how all this works. I personally feel like the biggest weakness of the Berserker are hard-hitting, scaling enemies. Everything which has a lot of HP and a lot of potential to scale up and grow is really, really problematic for the Berserker. What's really easy for the Berserker is every type of multi-hitting enemy. They're basically just... Um, just victims. Also worth mentioning is the Life Leech, I mean, I already said it, but the Life Leech applies until the end of turn. This means the more attacks you can whip out in the turn where you apply your, uh, your Life Leech, the better. This is really important to note, so you can get out the maximum effect out of that. And that's why it's quite good that you have a point of energy more whenever you drop below 50% HP. Okay, I think that was all quite uh, descri uh, descriptive. I think you guys know how this works now. And we're going to go over to the equipment section now. Alright, so the rune stones for the Berserker. I personally love a lot of different things for this class. First, I want to talk about the Athel rune, giving you a flat armor increase. For the Berserker, every point of armor is really good, because basically the more armor you have, the more valuable your HP grow. Especially if you plan to play below 50%, which you actually should try to, because the Berserker is strongest at this point. Armor does also make your HP more massive by reducing the enemy attacks. Pretty valuable thing, can't uh, emphasize it enough. Also pretty good for the armor slot is the stand room because max HP is something the Berserker likes a lot too because at the end of the day the more HP you have the easier it is to juggle around with the with your management there. Also worth a mention is the calc rune yielding a little bit of healing after every combat one but I personally consider this as a rune which you should take if you're still insecure how this all how all this life leech system works. It's basically not really necessary. And due to the fact that the Berserker has such a great way to heal himself, this is only mentioned here by me because I feel like it's a very good thing to learn the class and when you're not as good at utilizing the life leech, this thing can come in handy until you learn your ropes. For the weapon slots, I personally love, of course, damage increasers because since we have percentile life leech and since we don't scale that well, it comes in quite handy. Same goes for the Athel rune. Each card played increases my damage by 5%. Since, like I said, since we don't scale well, this is artificial scaling. This is good for us. Same goes for the Stan rune. Can be used in the weapon slot really good too. Sorry. Because lower armor means more damage. More damage means more healing so this is a very uh, good thing to do and beyond that well i'm no big fan of the tier and the cult rune here the first turns of combat well the cult rune is always a good one if i have an open slot i almost always love to have one inside there but for the very first rune every run I'd pretty much go for Gar, Ethel, or Stan, depending on my personal preferences. Okay, so to summarize, the Berserker is a very groovy character class which utilizes its own pain to uh, beat down enemies in a very cool way. You have a pretty nifty and effective way of taking damage and then healing yourself up for that. You are really good at... Uh, just surviving extremely long with those HP, and the weaknesses of this class are everything 
which scales over the course of time, grows really, really uh, punishing for this character class. So you should always try to focus down the enemies which have growing stats in any way. Beyond that, I got to say, focus on armor, focus on HP, that never hurts. With the cards, focus on things that hurt, focus on things that increase your armor, focus on things that decrease the enemy's armor and or defense, and have a couple of stuns available for those really massive hits that you just don't want to tank. Keep in mind that block can't save you always because you can't direct block correctly, and stun is always a more powerful opportunity to take out damage. That's pretty much it. I personally think the Berserker is a brilliant class if you're uh, if you're just uh, trying out the fighters and want, wanting to have some fun. I personally found him the most accessible of the three fighter classes. Way less complicated than the Weird Hunter and way less stiff than the uh, Zealot, or no, it's, uh, it's Pathfinder, I'm sorry, than the Pathfinder. And yeah, pretty straightforward fun. The only risk you can blow yourself up quite easily by taking too much damage and uh, dying one or two turns later. So always try to, to calculate one or two turns into the future a little bit more than with other classes because, you know, these HP might be your tool. But once you have, are at zero, you're dead anyways. So I hope that was kind of helpful for you. Drop your comments down below if you felt like I left out anything very, very important. Just add it under there. I always appreciate new knowledge. And beyond that, if there are questions open, just ask away. I'll do my best to answer them. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you liked this content. Also check out my channel and feel free to subscribe and turn on those notifications if you don't want to miss any of my daily content. Also down there in the description box, you'll find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams and there's also ways and means of giving this content creator some coffee or whatever you might want to do or not. Whatever you do or not, I'm, I just want to say thanks yet again for watching this video. It means a lot to me and have fun. See you soon. Bye-bye.